The skeletons of Deception Island's brutal past still scatter its beach. A hundred years ago, it was one of the most important whaling stations in Antarctica. The rusting pressure cookers turned thousands of tons of blubber into lamp oil. But the onshore stations couldn't compete with the arrival of industrial factory ships able to butcher and process whales out at sea. It allowed the fleets to plunder the oceans with brutal efficiency, with catastrophic consequences for Antarctica's giants. Now scientists are trying to piece together the impact of the slaughter on the whole ecosystem. These are columns of mud lifted from the Antarctic seabed. They contain DNA signatures of life in the sea at the time, and the deeper in the mud they're buried, the further back they go. It's environmental history. A lot of the baleen whales are eating krill. Suddenly there's fewer whales, a smaller whale population. So that's going to have immediate impacts on the krill, the zooplankton, and there'll be knock-on effects right the way through the ecosystem. And so we want to see if we can detect those changes before whaling starts, to see what the situation was before whaling started. Two years on, and the scientists are back in their university labs, trawling through the DNA signatures. So far, they've found marine life in one Antarctic fjord crashed 30 to 40 years ago for as yet unknown reasons. And as they go back further in time, they should see the impact of whaling. The fact that we have um, a significant change, which has obviously occurred at a particular point in time, is a heartening result. It's showing that we are uh, in, in, a, in a very sort of broad brush kind of way. We are able to reconstruct something meaningful about, about the, the ocean system. Since commercial whaling stopped in the 1980s, the population of some Antarctic species has begun to increase. But no one knows how many whales there should be. By reconstructing a healthy ocean, scientists will have a better idea whether marine conservation is anywhere near ambitious enough. Thomas Moore, Sky News.